Chapter 19 In the Shadows G'day everyone, Rune here, and this is Chapter 19 of my What If Ash Met Meowth First story. If you're new to this series, click the link in the description below to be taken to the playlist. Now let's begin the next chapter. Upon arriving in Viridian, Ash, Misty, Meowth, and Pikachu all marvel at how it's been almost a full year since they were last here. They're also glad to see that the Pokemon Center has been completely repaired after the fight with Team Rocket all those months ago. Reminiscing on their adventure, the group make their way to the Viridian Gym, where Ash and Misty intend to get their final badge before facing off against Misty's sisters. As soon as they arrive at the doors, they are met by a familiar face, who's just as surprised to see them as they are to see him. Gary greets the group with a smile, asking if Ash and Misty are planning on taking on the Viridian Gym too. Ash confirms before asking why Gary is challenging the gym. Didn't Gary tell them that he already has enough badges to enter the league? Gary tells them that he does, but the gym leader of Viridian is said to be the toughest trainer in Kanto, second only to the Elite Four and the Champion. There's no way Gary's passing up the chance for a challenge like that. He then asks how Misty and Ash's badges are going. He imagines that they're almost at the required number two. Ash and Misty confirm, telling Gary that after they get Viridian's badge, they only need Cerulean. This causes Gary to blink in surprise and ask why they don't have that badge already. After all, they would have needed to go through Cerulean in order to get to the other gyms, and when he went through, the gym leaders there were pushovers. Ugh, don't remind me. Ash explains to Gary that he and Misty didn't challenge the gym on their way through because they have a personal score to settle there. At Gary's confused face, Ash assures him that they'll tell him some other time. For now, they have a gym to challenge. Walking up to the entrance, the three trainers issue their challenges, only to be told that only one trainer is allowed to even enter the gym at a time. Gary is about to argue when Ash puts a hand over his mouth. He tells the guards that they understand and will decide who gets to go first before pulling both Gary and Misty away from the door. When they're at a safe distance, he pulls his friends into a huddle. Meowth asks, in a hushed voice, what's on Ash's mind. He can tell that he's picked up on something. Ash explains that he has a feeling there's more to this gym than meets the eye. He's always thought it's weird how the gym leader is almost never here. But the rule about only one trainer in the building at a time? He can understand a rule of only one challenger at a time, like a no double battle rule. But no one is allowed in the building aside from the challenger? That's seriously suspicious, especially since no other gym has ever had a rule like that. He's also read about the gym leader using Pokemon outside of his official specialty, which is prohibited in official matches. The group nods in understanding, seeing where Ash is coming from, then asks if he has a plan. Closing his eyes in thought, he begins to lay out his thought process. The gym is bound to have some kind of back entrance, since no one has ever seen the leader entering or exiting via the front door. He also remembers reading several articles about gym leaders that list the Viridian gym leader as being a ground specialist. However, like he said, he's also read interviews from challengers saying that he's used non-ground Pokemon too, usually normal, dark, and water. They're going to need someone to take on the first challenge and act as a distraction, while the rest of them find a way to sneak in. If his hunch is right, and this guy is breaking the rules in order to keep his unbeatable reputation, then that's something they need to report. And for that, they need evidence. He turns to Misty. With the types that the gym leader has been reported to use, her Pokemon are the most likely to be able to buy them the time they need. He asks if she's okay with being their distraction and she nods, wanting to find out the truth just as much as him. If this guy is really cheating in official matches, it tarnishes the reputation of all gym leaders, including her, and she already has enough of that to deal with from her sisters. With a plan of action set, the group stand from their huddle and walk towards the entrance. There, Misty tells the guards that she'll be the first challenger. As she walks through the doors, Ash wishes her luck, while Brock says that they're going to get something to eat while they wait. 
As the doors close behind her and the boys walk away, Ash bites the inside of his cheek, hoping that Misty will be okay. Inside the gym, Misty enters the battle arena, heart pounding with anxiety. At the far end of the field, she sees a platform high above the field, where the gym leader sits, shrouded in shadows. Swallowing around the lump in her throat, she takes her place at the battlefield as the man introduces himself without giving his name. When asked who she is, she introduces herself as Misty, the fourth gym leader of Cerulean City. This causes the man to pause for a moment before he gives a chuckle, startling Misty with how friendly it sounds. Ah, that's right. I heard that the old gym leaders retired and left the gym to their daughters. Well, Miss Misty, let us make this match one worthy of two gym leaders. Outside, at the back of the gym, Ash, Brock, Gary, Meowth, and Pikachu are all inspecting the wall, looking for any indication as to where the second entrance to the gym might be. After searching for several minutes, they reconvene to try and think of a plan B. While the humans and older Pokemon try to think of something, Togepi waves his arms, excited to be on a secret spy mission with his family. Feeling the movement, Ash looks down to see Togepi waving his arms in a familiar pattern. Before he can even think to react, Togepi's arms glow blue, and the next thing the group knows, they're inside the gym, looking out one of the windows they could see from outside. That works too, I guess? He makes a mental note to start looking into starting some light training with Togepi so that he doesn't accidentally use metronome explosion before turning back to everyone. They don't know how much time they have left, so they need to move. With that, they all begin to race down the hall, looking for anything that seems off. After a few moments, both Meowth and Pikachu pick up on a sound, which Meowth describes as a cry of distress. Following the two, Meowth and Pikachu lead the group to a locked door, which Meowth swiftly picks open. Stepping inside, they come face to face with a sight that is becoming far too familiar. Dozens of Pokemon locked in cages. Each of the cages is branded with a red R. A horrible feeling of realization hits the group like a punch to the gut. The gym leader isn't just a cheat and a creep, he's a part of Team Rocket. Likely a high ranking member considering his status as a gym leader. They've just walked into a Team Rocket base with no immediately available exit. And to think, we thought this was just a case of cheating. Meanwhile, with Misty, her battle against Giovanni is going very differently than she was expecting. He's only sent out two Pokemon so far, and both of them were ground types. She guesses that, since he's facing a second generation gym leader, he's playing it safe and playing by the rules. She's glad that Giovanni decided to make the battle 5 on 5, because she's not sure how much time the boys need. She can only hope that she can keep this going long enough. Just as that thought runs through her mind, Warthurtle knocks down Giovanni's Nidoking, bringing him down one more Pokemon. With that, the count of remaining Pokemon is brought to 2 Giovanni and 3 Misty. Misty sends a silent plea to the others to hurry before preparing for Giovanni's next Pokemon. Back with the boys, after calling the police, Gary and Brock are working on freeing the Pokemon that they found, while Ash, Meowth and Pikachu search for any others. After a few minutes, they find a room completely filled with machines. On the far end is a plane of glass that goes from floor to ceiling. On the other side is a figure completely clad in what looks like metal armor. There are wires connected all over the armor, leading to the machines, which are spitting out numbers and words that Ash isn't even going to try to understand. Quickly moving into the room, Ash asks Meowth if he thinks they can get through the glass. Soothingly, Meowth tells him to hold his Rapidashes. If they just try breaking through the glass, they might end up damaging the equipment hooked up to the Pokemon. Looking at the machines, he tells Ash that he thinks he'll be able to shut the system down and open the glass through them. He just needs time. Ash asks him to hurry, as they don't know how long Misty can keep Giovanni occupied. While Meowth works on hacking the machines, Ash turns to the unfamiliar Pokemon on the other side of the glass. Leaving Togepi with Pikachu, he walks up to the glass. Placing a hand on it, he tells the unknown Pokemon not to worry. 
They're going to get him out of there. Despite not being able to see the Pokemon's face, he can feel their eyes on him. Soon enough, Meowth gives a shout of triumph and the glass wall begins to sink into the floor. At the same time, the wires detach from the armor. Ash walks up to the Pokemon slowly, taking care not to frighten them. The Pokemon doesn't move a muscle as Ash approaches. Once he's close enough, he reaches up toward the helmet, planning to take it off. Just before his hands graze the helmet, the Pokemon moves, slamming Ash into a nearby wall with the gauntleted hand at his neck. Meowth shouts in shock while Pikachu holds back a panicking Togepi. Hearing the commotion, Gary and Brock come running in with the Pokemon that they've freed. Seeing Ash pinned by a threatening Pokemon, Gary prepares to battle, only for Ash to tell him to stop. Ignoring the pressure on his throat, he turns to the Pokemon with a smile. It's okay. Gently, Ash places a hand on the Pokemon's arm, not attempting to move it, just holding it. Without letting the nervousness he's feeling into his voice, he guesses that the Pokemon hasn't had a good life. They've been hurt and taken advantage of. Ash can understand why it's hard for them to trust another human. He's sorry he tried taking off the helmet, he hadn't realised it meant so much to them. He won't try to take it off again. None of them are here to hurt them or to capture them. Ash can guess that they've had enough of that to last a lifetime. The Pokemon is free to go wherever they want now, just like all the other Pokemon are. As he speaks, the Pokemon's grip slowly loosens until it's completely gone and Ash falls to the floor on his butt. At the same time, Togepi manages to break away from Pikachu and runs to Ash, throwing himself into the ten-year-old's arms, crying his eyes out. Ash comforts him, completely unaware of the Pokemon staring at the bruises forming on Ash's neck. Before any of them can recover enough to try and figure out what this Pokemon is, an alarm begins to blare. Back with Misty, she has just won the battle against Giovanni, who is now down in the battle area to give her his gym badge. Despite the final tally being 5-4 in Misty's favour, she can't help but feel that Giovanni had let her win. All throughout the battle, she got the feeling that Giovanni was holding himself back from something. Probably some method of cheating that he knew Misty would be completely able to report him on. As the feather-shaped badge is placed in her hand, the man's phone goes off, causing him to excuse himself to the other end of the room to answer. After a moment, he comes back, the expression on his face dark. He smooths it out slightly as he approaches Misty, apologising for the interruption. But a sudden emergency has come up which he needs to deal with himself. Before Misty can say anything, he tells her not to worry about her two friends, as he'll arrange a substitute before he leaves. For now, he asks her to tell her friends to wait outside the building until his stand-in is ready. Not knowing what else to do, Misty heads for the door, silently praying that the boys are alright. Back over with the boys, they are all looking around in panic, trying to figure out how they're going to get out of the building before any Team Rocket members show up. The mysterious Pokemon turns away as though preparing to leave before they stop and turn to look at the humans, their Pokemon and the Pokemon they freed. After a moment of contemplation, they raise a hand towards them, their eyes glowing blue under the visor of their helmet. In seconds, the humans and their Pokemon are gone. Then, they turn to the Pokemon that the group had freed and repeat the same motion. In a few seconds, the mysterious Pokemon and the Pokemon that had once been held captive are gone. Just as everyone is gone, a woman with dark purple hair, wearing a prim magenta business suit, comes bursting into the room to find nothing. Eyes wide, she calls over her shoulder to get the boss on the phone. Now! As soon as Misty exits the gym, the first thing she sees are the boys standing there, looking around in confusion. Relieved to see them all okay, she runs to them, calling their names. The boys turn to her with smiles of their own, just as happy to see her in one piece as she is to see them. As she reaches them, she immediately asks what happened before noticing the bruises on Ash's neck. Ash waves her off gently, telling her it's not as bad as it looks, before telling her that the gym leader isn't just a con artist, he's a high-ranking member of Team Rocket. He explains that they've called the cops, but due to an incident outside of town, they're not going to get here for a while. They need to keep the gym leader here until they arrive. 
Before Misty can tell them that Giovanni has already left, the guards from before approach them. They tell the group that, due to extenuating circumstances, the one trainer at a time rule has been temporarily lifted. They tell the group to follow them if they wish to take on the gym. With no time to talk things over, or to think of an alternative solution, the group follows the guards through the front entrance to the gym. And that, everyone, is where I'm going to end the story for now. Join me next time as we find out who's going to be Giovanni's stand-in for the battle against the boys, and Ash and Misty begin to make their way back to Cerulean City. I'm Rune, see you next chapter.